on my life. <laughs> Just type in a, a uh, congratulations into Larry Schinneberger. He uh, made uh, 617 pips wobbling. Way to wobble there, Larry. That's great. Fantastic. Well, traders, uh, Sean Lucas here. Great to be with you today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, swing trading and uh, I gotta just give you a disclaimer up front. I, uh, I, I look at swing trading a little bit differently than a lot of the, uh, a lot of the formal uh, technical analysis that you'll read out there, a lot of the books that you read, a lot of the stuff that you'll see on, uh, that you'll see on the internet. In fact, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about, you know, what the, what the rest of the world, how the rest of the world looks at, at swing trading and then how I look at it and then kind of kind of go in and, and see if there's uh, if there's some some things that we can do to make swing trading a little bit more effective for us so that's our uh, objective today just want to uh, say thanks to all of our uh, all of the traders out there um, who are working on the who are working on the uh, Hamilton challenge this has been a phenomenal challenge for us and I just want to say you know you guys are doing some, some amazing work out there um, it's great to look at an equity curve of some of our traders and see how 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 bad how much better those equity curves have gotten over the last couple months as you've been meeting your equity your Hamilton challenge again that challenge just focuses on the consistency component you know, you set a very realistic goal, you try and meet that goal, and then through the process you learn to, you, you, you basically give yourself positive feedback through that process. So you're always hitting your goal and stopping. Hit your goal, you stop. You hit your goal, you stop. And it's, uh, it's removing a lot of the drawdowns that we're seeing in, in some of those equity curves. So anyway, thank you for those apiary fund traders out there that are uh, that are taking that challenge to heart. You're doing a fantastic job. We've given a ton of discounts <laughs> on the uh, on the monthly membership fees. So uh, so just keep at it. Just keep going. We we're gonna will that that Hamilton challenge will end the on the at the end of this month. So and then we'll probably look at a different challenge for the next part of the next part of the year. So. Anyway, keep at it this month and, and earn that $10 discount off your, uh, off your monthly technology fee. All right, let's jump into swing trading. So um, I, did a swing, I did a Google search uh, before this session. I wanted to know, you know, what does the internet say about swing trading? And well, that's, that's an enlightening process because the first four websites that I looked at all had very different definitions of what swing trading was. So one of them said that, you know, a swing trader is anyone who holds the trade over one session. Another one, I'm just looking at my notes here. Another one says more than one week, you hold the trade more than one week, but less than two months. So that's the definition of a swing trade according to that website. Another website here said two to six days and possibly up to two weeks. So there's the third definition for a swing trader that that I read in the first three results. And then the fourth one said swing traders just hold on to trades multiple days. So I thought, you know, as I was <laughs> looking at that, I was looking at those results, I'm like, man, it is no wonder that everyone's confused about trading because you can't get any kind of consistent answers uh, from anywhere, you know, and, and, uh, and I thought, you know, what is the most important thing about trading, uh, swing trading, and, and what do we really need to focus in on? And I think one of the premises that a lot of these websites look at is they're, they're taking the definition of swing trading from a stock investing angle. So in stock investing, what you're doing is you're looking at day charts, number one, right? You're also looking at, at longer term setups. You, you're, you're not intraday trading, you're investing. You're looking at, you know, over, over the period of, a, of a, some time, you know, <laughs> one day, more than one day, more than one day, less than two weeks, more than up to two months. It just gets confusing. 
So what we're going to do today is we're going to start from the very beginning. What do you need to know as a trader when you're first looking at placing a trade? Okay. So you can, as a trader, you have, you're the control, you're, you're the central command, right? You can control whatever you do in the market. It's your choice, right? So what I like to do when I'm starting out looking at a trade is I want to ask myself two very basic questions. Number one, how much money could I make on this trade? What is my setup? What does my strategy tell me? How much money can I make in this trade? And number two question is, how long is, this going to, is it going to last? How long am I going to have to hold on to this trade before I can get out, before it has the potential to reach my target? And so that's what, uh, that's, that's the, the premise by which we're going to now look at swing trading. Because what, what, I'll, what I like to do is I like to kind of get rid of this idea that swing traders hold, the mark, hold their trades for, you know, two, two, two days to two months. We're just going to, let's just do this right now. Let's just throw that out. <laughs> let's get rid of that, that ideology. And what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to take a look at swing trading from the, from the perspective of the chart. Okay. So if we look at swing trading from the perspective of a chart, what we're going to do is we're going to try and identify what is the swing trade on the chart. So the swing trade can last from, from it can be quick, it can be long, it can be, it can be, you know, aggressive and volatile, or it can be very slow and grinding, right? But regardless, that swing trade there's something about the chart that will give us an opportunity to place what we call a swing trade. Okay, so let's just take a look at a chart real quick here. And let's look at a daily chart. And if we're looking at this chart right here, let me zoom out here. We're going to start to see a couple of a couple of patterns that are that are common to every chart that you look at. Uh, charts are what we call fractal in nature. So if I'm looking at a daily chart, and if I covered up the daily time frame, so you couldn't see what you know, you couldn't see this as a daily chart. You'd be hard pressed to know: is this a daily chart, or is this an hourly chart, or is it a five-minute chart? If all you saw was the information contained inside this little box, it'd be, it'd be difficult for you, you know, if you weren't so familiar with the, how the, uh, the, histor the historical pricing of it. But it'd be difficult for you to know whether you're looking at an hourly chart, a daily chart, a one minute, five minute, anything like that. Because the markets are fractal, meaning that the same patterns, the same construct of price, the, the same way price develops on a one minute chart is similar to the way it develops on a daily chart or an hourly chart or on a, on a monthly chart. And so that's the first thing is that we, if we take a look at at swing trading from the lens of the chart that we're looking at, now all of a sudden swing trading takes a whole new dynamic. It's it's a paradigm shift because what we're gonna what we're gonna do is that you can hold on to swing trades for you know 12, 15 minutes on a one minute chart. Um, you can hold on to them 12, 15 days on a daily chart. You can hold on to them 12, 15 hours on an hourly chart. So what's different from the way that I look at swing trading from the way the rest of the internet is looking at it is that instead of saying that a swing trade lasts between one and so many days, what I'm saying is, is let's look at the chart and let's let the chart dictate what the swing trade is, okay? So let's take a look at this chart. And on this chart, what we have is we have several, let's just delete that. So we have several moves. The market always moves from pivot point to pivot point, right? So here's a pivot, there's a pivot high. There's a pivot low, there's a pivot high, pivot low, pivot high. Then we got a pivot low, pivot high, pivot low, pivot high, blah, blah, blah. We, you can start to see that that there's all these moves and then a bunch right in there. There's all these little short-term moves on a chart, 
right? So what we've just identified here is the short-term trend on any chart. Well, let's look at a one-minute or a five-minute chart, and we'll see the same thing on a five-minute chart. What, where is the short-term trend? There's a short-term swing or short-term pullback, short-term pullback, short-term. So you see all these short-term moves on on the chart, right? So that those are those those movements in between pivot points from pivot low to pivot high from turning point from a low turning point to a high turning point any distance in between those two points is what we call the short term the short term trend now the, there's another trend that we'll see on the chart and that's the that's the uh, intermediate term trend and so what these these short term trends form the trend, the intermediate trend. So the intermediate trend here started right here and ended here. Because if you look at each of these pivots, they're consecutively higher, 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 low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high. Oops. Now, We've got a low that's exactly the same as the low before, right there. So now we're all of a sudden in what we call it sideways or that uptrend, that intermediate trend is, is on the verge of ending. And in fact, it does end when it breaks below that point. That's the reversal of the intermediate term trend, right? So this is our intermediate term trend. Then we have a very short, fast, intermediate downtrend, followed by a very, sh very quick intermediate uptrend, followed by another short downtrend right here, intermediate uptrend, intermediate downtrend, intermediate uptrend, and downtrend. Okay, so that's not, that's not all. What we'll see if we zoom out, in fact, if we looked at a weekly chart, we would see that these uptrends form the long-term trend, okay? So to, to identify the long-term trend, you match the, the intermediate pivots. So there is your long-term trend up, up. In fact, that trend goes to here. That's the max of your upward trend. And then right now, we are in a long-term down that starts here and currently is, is right there. So let's see. Let's identify all the trends then. What we've got is right here, we've got a short-term downtrend, or uptrend, sorry. Short-term uptrend followed by an intermediate. We've also got the intermediate uptrend right here, right? So intermediate uptrend right there. And then we have the long-term trend right here, okay? So as a trader, what our job is, is, is to just basically try and identify the trend that we're trying to catch, okay? And so we can use the trend that you're trying to catch to define the type of trader that you are, if that makes sense. So anyone trying to catch this short-term trend is a short-term trader. Anyone trying to catch the intermediate trend here is an intermediate term trader or a swing trader. Anyone trying to catch this long-term trend is a long-term trader or what I call a position trader. So you've got a short-term trader, a swing trader, and a long-term trader and all of those different trends will get, the, the, the trader is just simply trying to catch that trend. That's all they're trying to do. That's when you, get, when you sit down in front of the market and you're trying to catch a move, you're saying, okay, I'm trying to catch this move, the short term move, or I'm trying to catch the intermediate term move or the long term move. So on Thursday mornings when I'll trade with Nate, 
what you see is I'm trying to catch the short-term trends on a five-minute chart I'm trying to catch that reversal on the short-term trends on a five-minute chart while Nate Nate is often trying to catch the intermediate term trends on a, on on the, in the market whatever time frame he's looking at he's got a little bit longer perspective to the way that he likes to trade doesn't make Nate a better trader doesn't make me a better trader it just means that we're both looking to catch a slightly different pattern in the market does that make sense I hope that makes sense okay so now if we go back to that first question those first two questions that we asked right how long is it going to take me to how long am I gonna to have to sit in this trade okay how long am I gonna to have to sit in this trade now if we can look at a chart we can tell fairly quickly how long we're gonna to have to sit in the chart right or on in this trade so we're looking at a daily chart the short-term trader on a daily chart is going to have to they're going to have to sit there a, a little while, right? In this case, several days, several days. The swing trader, however, is going to be sitting in that trade for several months on a daily chart. And the long-term trader slightly longer on a daily chart. And you can add everything up and and for those of you at Apiary Fund, you, you can apply the technique that we call the price and time cycles to give you an idea what that average time is for each of those trends. You simply add up, you go back into history and you add up all the long-term trends and how long each one of those lasted and you average them out and that's your average long-term price cycle. Same thing with the short, uh, the intermediate term trend. You go back, you add up all of the intermediate trends and how, how, how long each of those trends lasted, you average them out, that's your average, that is your average intermediate term trend. So that'll tell you how long you're in, the, how long you're in these trades. So now if we drop down to a one minute chart, we can do the same analysis that we just did on the daily chart and we can find the intermediate term trends on the one minute chart. We can find the short term trends on the one minute chart. right so if I'm a if I'm a short-term trader on a one-minute chart that's the trend I'm trying to catch if I'm an intermediate or swing trader on the one-minute chart this is the trend I'm trying to catch and if I'm a long-term trader I wouldn't be in any trades because this market is just going sideways <laughs> slightly down right slightly down on this chart but long term long term trading it, we'd have to go back into history to get a little bit more pivot action or jump up to a 5 minute and we could kind of get the same thing so we've just kind of broken the long term we've just kind of broken the long term trend just kind of like that all right so is this, this making sense let's do a quick sound check and make sure uh, let's make sure any questions up to this point go ahead and type them in the chat box if you have questions really important concept like like I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you that you identify the move that you're trying to catch and stick with that move Okay, because what happens to most traders is they'll they'll start out in these trying to catch these the the they'll start out trying to catch these one minute or these short term trends on the one minute chart, and pretty soon next thing you know they're trying to catch, you know they're saying oh you know that market's going to pull back and and they're wait they're holding their trade through one up 
one down, one up, one down, one up, one down, one up, one down, one up, one down. And what they're really doing is they're sitting there holding through an entire intermediate trend, waiting for that market to pull back to where they were on the first. So you need to, you need to establish a little bit of discipline in your trading. And if this is the move you're trying to catch, then that's the move you need to, to stick to. And if the trade doesn't work out, you need to get out of that trade because you'll have many opportunities. There's a second opportunity and a third opportunity and a fourth one and a fifth one and a sixth one and a, and a seventh opportunity. You'll have plenty of opportunities to reestablish your trade as long as you're not holding it through all of those up and down cycles in the market. Very important that you stick with the trend that you're trying to catch in the beginning of your trade. So what I'm, the, all of this is building up to the question then, how do you set up, how do you trade, you know, what is the income opportunity and how do you do, how do you do a better job catching these intermediate term trends in the market? So to, to answer that question, to answer that question, again, we need to kind of go back to the concept of price and time cycles. I think I just lost the YouTube live. Mm, good. Am I good? Mm -hmm. I can't see it. <laughs> so we're back. All right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a look at all of the uh, all of the intermediate terms trends on this chart. So let's just take a look at them and let's just measure them. So here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, and there's one. So now if we take those and measure the distance of each of those trends, I'm going to put a, a the starting point at each of each of them. And this is a quick and dirty way to do your, your price and time cycles. What you're going to start to see is that you're going to start to see that there's a culmination of, of duration or, or magnitude, how far that market moves over a period of time. So you've got one set of trades that are kind of working here. One, two, three, kind of within that box. You got two in this set here and you got one right here, right? So what's interesting is if these are the natural cycles, the natural intermediate cycles of the market. So if we take the smallest common denominator, this smallest move right here, and we start building a couple of, of blocks next to that. What we're gonna see is that the market has a real tendency to move in this, to make moves that were, are pretty close to the basic building block of the market. So this is your basic building block. It's your, your smallest price cycle, if you will. So here you've got a, a one price cycle move. Here you've got a two price cycle move. Here you've got three price cycle moves, okay? So if I'm setting up a, a swing trade, the second question, okay, is how much money can I potentially make for this, from this market? And I've got a two, I've got two out of five one, two out of six chance of hitting a three price cycle move according to this chart here. I've got a three out of six chance of hitting two price cycles. And I've got a one out of six chance of hitting a one price cycle. So if I'm setting up my trade, chances are I don't want to set my trade up for this kind of move. I'm not going to set my expectation for the max move. I don't, that doesn't make any sense, right? 
if I'm going to set my trade up, I've got a much better probability of hitting a two price cycle move than a three price cycle move. I have an even better probability of hitting a one price cycle move, right? Because every single, every single, um, every single intermediate term setup has hit at least the one price cycle, right? That's the definition of the smallest common denominator. But really, setting up for that two price cycle move right here it seems like a pretty good approach to setting up my swing trade. So how much is that? Come in here and let's measure the distance of a two price cycle move. It's roughly 33 pips, 33 pips on this one minute chart. So I'm going to jot that down real quick. 33 pips on a one minute chart. Okay, let's do the same thing on the daily chart. What does the daily chart look like? Oh, we, we, you, we, 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 excuse me. <laughs> we want to do the same thing on, on the duration of the trade. So we want to know how long that trade's going to last. So, you know, we want to go how many bars between here and here, and how many bars between here and here, and how many bars between here and here. And we want to average those out to give us the average bar how, how many minutes it's going to take for us to hit that 33 pips. Does that, does that make sense? So we measured the price, how much, but we also want to measure how long. And we're just going to kind of guesstimate that that's going to be roughly 11.57, 9.27, so 9.30, 9.30 to noon, so nine thirty to noon is what, two and a half hours? So two and a half hours to make that, two and a half hours to make that 33 pips. Okay, now let's go back to the daily. Let's do the same thing. Okay, swing trades. This is going to be a little a little wackier. Let's do it on an hourly chart. That, that might be a little bit cleaner for us. All right, let's, let's identify all of the uh, intermediate trends on the chart. Boom, 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 boom. So now we're going to just line them all up. We're going to try and find the common denominator. And we're starting to see a little bit of, uh, we're, we're starting to see a little bit of uh, confluence right here. And then a little bit more, kind of, it's a little, it's a little off, but kind of right in here. So really, if we take a look at that, we've probably got one, two, and again, this is not exact science, but it just gives us a ballpark estimate, right? So really, that's about one cycle right and almost all of the almost almost all the time the market hits that one cycle um and so what is that let's look at that how many pips is that so that's about 82 pips so the swing trader is in that market 82 for 82 pips. That's about what that swing trader can hope for in a swing trade. That's about the average, right? That's about where that's where you have a high probability of hitting your targets if you're if you're targeting 82 pips. So the 1 minute chart, we're targeting 33 pips 
on the one hour chart, we're targeting 82 pips, okay? And how long between, how long is that gonna take? How long am I gonna be sitting in that trade? 1 p.m., let's see, these are gonna last a couple of days, so 5.13. To 523. So about 10 days. So in this market, the swing trader on the hourly chart should be looking for about 82 pips over 10 days. Uh, the swing trader on the one minute chart should be looking for about 33 pips over about 2.5 hours. Does that make sense? So that's how now, if you use this approach to identifying your swing trades, man, it gives you a lot of information, doesn't it? It, it, it really does. It gives you a lot of, it, it sets the boundaries for your trade. It sets the expectation for your trade. So you know, man, if I'm getting, if I'm looking here at the one minute chart and I'm looking to make a 100 pip move on a swing trade, chances are I'm not going to ever hit that, right? I'm going to have to hold through one. I might as well be looking at a long-term trade because that's really what I'm trading is the long-term trend at that point. I'm having to, I'm having to pull out 33 pips, or, or sorry, 100 pips. That's going to take a little while for you to do it because the market will hit its end, turn around and move the other direction on you, Turn around and go back in your favor. Turn around and pull back one more time. Then turn around and hopefully go in your favor again. And then, now hopefully you have a chance of hitting your 100 pips. Well, look at the efficiency of that. Is that how efficient you want to be as a trader? Do you want to sit there and hold it through all of that time that the market, those, you got two and a half hours of pullback, another two and a half hours of pullback, another two and a half hours of pullback. You know, that's a good, that's a good seven and a half hours where the market is going against you. Is there any wonder why we get frustrated in trading? It makes a lot of sense, right? What we find is that some tr most traders, they go in without having a realistic expectation of what the trade is going to give them. So let's go back to what the internet says about swing trading. <laughs> it's all over the board. It's hold it for more than one session. It's hold it for you know up to two months. It's holding it for two weeks. That just doesn't make sense. You can start, I hope you can see, and my, my paradigm shift that I hope that you get today is that I hope you can see the, the challenge that you have in, you, in looking at swing trading through the perspective of what the internet is teaching you, if that makes sense. And how much better it is to actually go through an analysis on the chart that you're looking at. Swing trades can be on any chart, doesn't matter. A swing trader is trying to catch the intermediate term trend. That's it. And whether that intermediate trends on a one minute chart, a five minute chart, a 15 minute hour, daily, weekly, monthly, it doesn't matter. That uh, trader is trying to catch that intermediate term trend. Now, if you look at trading through that lens, I think what you're going to discover is that you're going to be a lot better positioned to make money and to be satisfied with the money that you're making in the market, right? This is the whole reason why I don't, I very rarely trade long term. I very rarely trade long term because I just don't want to tie up my capital for that long. And to go through that many intermediate pullbacks through that process, when I can rack up, I mean, when I can rack up, check this out. I can wrap up, rack up a short-term trade here, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. So remember our income opportunity on the swing trade was 33 pips, right? So 33 puts us 
right about there. So let's draw that line. So that's our income opportunity on an intermediate term trade, right? If all I'm trading is the long side of this trade, I've got one trade, two trades, three trades, four trades, five trades, six trades. So here is my opportunity on this intermediate swing trade. Here is my opportunity on the short-term trade, trading it multiple times while the intermediate-term trader is holding on to it. You can see the difference. This is 33 pips. This, the short-term, the culmination of all the short-term trades, is about 70 pips. So 33 income opportunity, the max income opportunity for this position trader, the, I'm sorry, the swing trader. The income op, max income opportunity for the short-term trader is 70 pips. So this is why you'll see a lot of a lot of good traders in this world kind of lean more and more and more and more down into smaller time frames is because they simply recognize now the income opportunity for trading. If they're good at reading price analysis or they're, they're good at analyzing price and, and catching the moves in the market, there's no sense for them to hold on to long trades for, for several hours if they can get multiple trades. In, in just a few minutes on, on the short term. So there you have it, traders. I hope that this has made sense. I hope that, uh, I hope that you've had an aha moment through this process because I think, again, I think that if you can understand this concept, you will be light years ahead of anyone who's researching, you know, swing trading on the internet because you just get confused it's just so difficult to understand all the different voices and what they're saying and everything like that. What I've given you today is a very cons clear, concise um, process for, uh, for analyzing your opportunity as a swing trader. So I hope you've enjoyed that. So let's wrap up. Okay, a couple of things. I've got some notes um, that I've jotted down and I'm going to I'm going to make those available to you if you if you can uh, in the chat box or not in the chat box but right underneath the video here on YouTube there will be a link to get your your copy of the notes. Now I'm going to make them a little nicer. This is a lot this is a lot of chicken scratch right now, but we'll, we're going to make them a little bit nicer and make them available so that you have a complimentary set of notes to for this uh, as you're listening to this uh, this YouTube presentation again um, but you'll find the link to those notes in the uh, chat or right underneath the video here the second thing is if you wouldn't mind traders do us a favor uh, just click the like button the little thumbs up um, it does it really helps with all of the all of the work that we're trying to do with the YouTube and the messages that we're trying to get out to the world about trading and you know apiary fund does a fantastic job helping traders through the development process okay there's learning you get that in a book you get that from a workshop you get that from you know the broker down the street there's a learning component to everything that you're doing but that's where that ends and it's really difficult for traders to make that transition over to the ability to execute you know get some experience and execute in the market and that's the place where apiary fund lives that's our that's our that's our bread and butter is we're trying to provide a platform with our beeline to funding and our lvo and all of these classes and everything we're trying to do here we're trying to help traders get through that 
that transition process from learning to actually doing it in the market. And again, we, uh, you know, we provide you with all the tools, training just like this. Uh, you get to watch, uh, we get to watch us trade and, and do it in live, in real markets. Just a phenomenal, it's just a phenomenal process. I wish, I really do wish that I could come back, you know, uh, 20 years ago when I first got started in this and I wish that there was something like apiary for me because I know that it would have cut down on hours you know weeks <laughs> months years of my learning curve we've condensed it down into uh, to very manageable process so if you're serious about trading you know please just do like uh, like this video so that others can uh, can watch it and and make a decision whether you know they're whether they are serious about trading as well <laughs> and if they're if they're uh, able to uh, take advantage of what apiary fund can do for them so with that traders appreciate uh, spending some time with you today i hope it's been helpful for some reason my chat box isn't working here so i can't look at any questions but we'll kind of wrap up we've gone a little bit long anyway so Thank you for spending your, your afternoon with me here today, and we wish you the best of success. For those of you who are with Apiary Fund, we've got that trading room in the morning. <laughs> Our internet is working much better this week, so, uh, so look forward to trading with you. Oh, actually, never mind. We're doing a live broadcast, aren't we? Oh, to, we're doing a live broadcast tomorrow. This, you don't want to miss this. Um, Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be trading with the Chamber of Commerce, the the Chamber of Commerce here in Utah. So they what they're what they're looking to do is they they're like, hey Sean, we'd love to have you come out and and uh, show us how you what you do, how you manage portfolios and stuff like that. You know, it's a group of business people, so everybody, all of that whole group is really interested in this. And so what we're going to do tomorrow is I'm going to take a fifty thousand dollar account and trade it with that group with the with the uh, with the um, the business leaders here in local business leaders and I'm going to give them a twenty five hundred dollar account and they're going to trade it so they're going to follow along I'll I'll walk through all the trades and everything and and explain what we're doing and how how to do it and they'll be following along now all of the profit that we make from our trading session tomorrow is going to go towards a scholarship for the local DECA club at our at the local high school here. So we thought, you know what, let's do something that we that can benefit the kids, the youth, and uh, promote their entrepreneurship and, and everything. So we're going to give a scholarship out with all of the profits, any profits that we make tomorrow uh, will go to fund a scholarship uh, to one of the local DECA students. So join us for that it's on the apiary fund calendar so we're actually it'll be a trading room but we're going to start a little bit earlier so that we can uh, so that we can get so so we can get ready primed and ready for that trading session so join us in the morning for that it'll be fun okay thank you traders wish you the best of success happy trading and uh, good luck with the hamilton challenge thanks everyone see ya